You've seen that atoms are composed of nuclei, which are composed of protons and neutrons, and of electrons around it. So let's look at a particular example. Let's look at a carbon atom. Carbon atoms have six protons in the nucleus. This carbon atom has also six neutrons. Now, the protons are positively charged, so I have six positive charges. The atom also has electrons, and in this case, it has six electrons, which are negatively charged. So the atom as a whole has no charge. It is neutral. Six plus charges, six negative charges, compensate each other. We write this atom as follows. Capital C is the abbreviation for carbon. The 12 superscript indicates the sum of the protons and the neutrons, which is 6 plus 6 in this case. The subscript 6 indicates the number of protons. And the number of protons, in fact, defines which element I'm talking about. So let's look at another carbon atom, this one. This one also has six protons. But instead of having six neutrons, like the previous example, this one has seven neutrons. The nucleus is still positively charged by six positive charges, which means it has six negative charges as well. Those are provided by the electrons. So both carbon atoms here in this example have six protons and six electrons. But the first atom has six neutrons and the second atom has seven neutrons. Now both are carbon atoms. The second car carbon atom is indicated by the following. Capital C, 13 superscript, which means the sum of the protons and neutrons. And six, again, is the number of protons, which defines the element. These two carbon atoms are each other's isotope. In fact, most elements have isotopes. Here's your list. For instance, lithium. There's two lithiums in this list, lithium-6 and lithium-7. They're both lithium, they both have the same amount of protons, but they have different amounts of neutrons. Lithium-7 has one neutron more than lithium-6. We also see oxygen, oxygen-16, 17, and 18. Those are three major isotopes of oxygen. They differ only in their amount of neutrons in the nucleus. This is what you find in the periodic table. An abbreviation of each element, in this case carbon, capital C, with the number above it. That number above it is called the atomic number. It represents the number of protons. Again, the number of protons defines the element. There's a second number, which is the average atomic mass. In this case, 12.01. Now, how do we determine the average atomic mass? Well, we saw that there are at least two isotopes of carbon. There's carbon-12, which has six neutrons. And the abundance of this isotope is 98.89%. But there's also a second isotope, carbon-13. It has six neutrons. And the abundance is much less. It's 1.1%. But they're both there. And so the average atomic mass depends on both. So in order to determine the average atomic mass, we need to know two things, the relative abundance and the relative masses. So what is the mass of an atom? Well, the mass of an atom is defined in units of atomic mass units, or AMU. What is that? Here's a definition. One AMU is the mass of carbon-12 divided by 12. That means that the mass of any atom is related to the mass of carbon-12. Carbon-12 is our reference, and all other elements are measured relative to carbon-12. So, what is the mass of carbon-12? Well, if you multiply this equation by 12 on both sides, you find that the mass of carbon-12 is 12 AMU. So this information we need to determine the average atomic mass. But we have two ingredients. We have carbon-13 and carbon-12. They have different abundances, and they have different masses. We just learned that the mass of carbon-12 is 12 AMU. 
Now, what is the mass of carbon-13? The mass of carbon-13 is defined relative to the mass of carbon-12. It is the mass of carbon-13 over the mass of carbon-12 times 12 AMU. How do we get that ratio? That ratio you can get from doing experiments. And people have determined that the ratio in this case is 1.08 times 12 AMU which gives us a value of almost 13 AMU. Now we have all the components to calculate the average mass, the average atomic mass of carbon. It is the abundance of each of the isotopes expressed in its fraction. So that gives us 0.9889 times the mass of carbon-12, which is 12 AMU, plus the abundance of the second isotope, expressed in a fraction, that is 0.011 times the mass, which is 13 AMU, which gives us the average mass of carbon, which is 12.01. How do we calculate the mass of other elements? Well, we do it in the same fashion. The mass of any other element can be calculated as follows. It is the ratio, again, of the average mass of the element over the mass of carbon-12 times 12 AMU. This ratio, again, must come from experiment. Let me show you an example. What is the mass, the average atomic mass, of aluminum? Aluminum, we need to know the ratio between the mass of the element and the mass of carbon-12. From experiment, we obtain the following value, the value of 2.2. We multiply that by 12 and we find the mass, the average atomic mass, of aluminum. It is 26.9. In the periodic table, you find the following information. Aluminum, the abbreviation AL, the subscript, which is 13, which means aluminum has 13 protons, and its average atomic mass, determined in the way just described. The average atomic mass is therefore include the masses of all the isotopes of each element. If you look at the periodic table, you will find this information for each of the elements. A subscript is the atomic number, or the number of protons, which defines the element. The average atomic mass is given below it. Now remember, the average atomic mass includes the masses of the respective isotopes. This information will be very useful subsequent segments.